Hi, welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Paul Turnbull. At Monroe & Associates, we're an engineering consulting firm. We help our customers and clients um, save some money on their products while improving the products for their end customers. So if that's the kind of things that interest you, give us a call. Um, we were tearing down um, this Ego lawnmower, and we noticed that the motor had some interesting characteristics. And I wanted to give people a quick look at what that what these motors look like on the inside. Um, this is a brushless DC motor. Uh, we call this kind of motor an inside out motor because this part, which typically with a, a, a normal brush motor, this would be the armature and this would be the thing that's spinning and this would be the housing that stays still. With a brushless DC motor, we turn things around and we hold this still and we spin the frame that has the magnets in it. So that's one of the uh, in interesting things and it's an inside out motor. Also, this motor was wound with an unusual winding pattern. Um, we've got 18 of these uh, teeth, we call these uh, stator teeth. Um, so there are 18 teeth and then 18 slots between the teeth. This is wound using something called a fly winder, where so the wire is suspended between two prongs and the, the prongs spin round and round and then two uh, guides move the wire in and out to get the wire in. A fly winder is a relatively inexpensive piece of equipment to do winding. It's very fast. It was developed originally for winding brush DC motors. Um, now it's used for winding these brushless, these inside out brushless DC motors. Um, the, way, the reason why it's brushless um, you don't need to use brushes to change the current because we plug this into an inverter and the inverter does the job of switching the current from, uh, from one direction to the other. Um, so the inside of this has a, a, a number 20 of these magnets around the outside. And then this goes on, and, I, and whenever you have neodymium magnets, people need to be very careful about putting things together because they jump together like that. And it's easy to get your fingers pinched in uh, when you're dealing with neodymium magnets. This is in stark contrast to uh, this motor, which is a, um, a traditional wire wound, uh, stranded wound motor that is an induction motor. This, this style of motor, and by the way, this is not an old motor. This motor was uh, from a unit that was built um, in 2024. So it's a relatively new but uh, motor, but it's made from using a technology that is a century or more old. Um, it's an induction motor, so the beauty of it is that it has no magnets. Um, this uh, aluminum here is cast into slots that go down through the, the motor. And the, the, those slots form bars, conductors, and then these two end rings form shorting bars that short these conductors together so that when current flows in the in a stator, it induces current in the rotor to turn this into an electromagnet. Um, it's, it's an amazing process that was first discovered by Nikola Tesla. Um, Tesla gets credit for the first patent on an induction motor. Um, though this particular induction motor is a three-phase induction motor of a design that was um, originally developed by uh, Steinmetz, Charles Steinmetz, um, all done in the 1800s. So this type of motor has been around for a long time. It's not a very power dense motor though, very reliable, but this motor only gets three quarters of a horsepower of 
of capability, whereas this brushless DC motor, which I'm not going to be able to get apart again, uh, from it, you can see its size and weight, is actually three times more powerful than that motor. This is a 1600 watt motor, and this is a 500 watt motor. So it's just a size and power difference. The capability of torque is very different. This is also much more efficient than the induction motor. So with uh, improvement in efficiency, improvement in power, improvement in size, um, you end up also with this being actually lower cost. Even though it has neodymium magnets, which are expensive, this has so much copper and steel and aluminum in it that the material cost of this plus the cost of integrating this into your product because it's so big and heavy ends up being that this ends up being more costly than the smaller motor. So there, there you go. That's the, what we found here when we tore apart this uh, Ego electric mower. And if you want to try to incorporate this type of new technology into your products, give us a call.